20 unapproved routes, no checks on goods being transported, bad roads, and accusations of extortion by border officials. And that's in our latest of the stories we're doing on porous borders. The series seeking to highlight the state of Ghana's point of entry. Today, we're taking you to the northeast region from where correspondent Ilya Sutanko interacts with some smugglers and users of various unapproved routes and why they make that choice to use those routes. The Bunkurugu Nankwanduri district shares boundaries in the north with Garu district in the upper east region, west with the east Mampusi, south with Gushigu and Treponi district. With an estimated total land size of over 1,200 square kilometers, the district is a leaking gateway with just two approved routes and over 20 illegal entry routes from Togo into the country. There is limited presence of security and law enforcement officials at the two approved routes found in these communities located in Bumpurugu and Nankwanduri. On June 13, this is what we encountered at the approved routes from Bumpurugu to Togo. John Larry is a commercial tricycle driver transporting Ghanaian traders to Togo. Okay, so when you get to the immigration service, what yeah. do they expect? Do they take money from yeah, you? Yeah, they are taking money. Yeah. How much? Yeah. Two cities. Custom three cities, the other barrier, two cities. So when you go, when you're coming, you have to pay the same thing? No, 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 no. And the Togolese officials, too, they uh, take money? Yes, but it's five cities, the other one, five cities. Another driver, Gancon Collins, tells me, although it's easy to evade border officials through the numerous illegal entry points, he always prefers using the approved route because security personnel will only take some money and allow him to pass. So we have Ghana borders to then to go to. So any times you are going, then when you come to the custom barrier, the, any any box that you pick, you just give them five cities. But only that they consider they take five cities. But one is two cities. But we always consider and give them five cities. The Oti River slides through communities in Ghana and Togo and serves as the main point for illegal movement. Every day, people use these points at different locations to smuggle and traffic goods into the country. Daniel Yanube details how he has used the unapproved routes many times to smuggle items into Bunkurugu. Speaking in a Togolese community called Yambori, Daniel showed us one of the unapproved routes through which they enter Ghana illegally. This route, this main road, is linking up to uh, Bunkurugu. When you are to pass through to immigration, go to Bunkurugu, then you take this road to Bunkurugu. Come to the customs, the two good. So just before you now come to immigration and then Ghana customs, then we go to Mukuru. So that place, we don't have immigration no, officers? No, immigration is not there. Mm -hmm. So uh, have you ever passed, used this road before? I've ever used it before. Because if it's only if it is raining season that we feel difficult crossing that river. There's some river linking after the river, you link up to Mukuru. So it so means many that it's linking up to Mukuru, many roads there. Both immigration and custom officials in the district declined to comment. However, the district chief executive, Alaji Majid Azuma, says following recent reports of increased terrorist attacks in Burkina Faso, the government has moved in to tighten border security. According to him, special anti terrorism troops have been deployed to help immigration officers secure the country's borders in the district. Understandably, he will not provide further details about the mission of this special force, but added they are on an operation called named Operation Conquest Fist. The, the process of the border over here, in fact, <laughs> is a problem. It's a problem. It was the approved route over here, one is at Bimbani, one in the Bufugu town here, yeah, one at the Mamoga, where we have a migration custom and police checkpoints along the road. But the rest, which some the, uh, the, the local people use motorbike bike to cross to go to Togo, I can say that it's uncomfortable. You cannot trace them easily. 
Yeah. But uh, these days we are experiencing terrorist attack in some part of the borders in of the country. Uh, uh, district, and for that matter, Yoyo in addition is bordered. She are border with uh, Togo. Uh, for the past four and some months, four years and some months, I'm here as a district commander. We have not experienced uh, anything like terrorist activity, which may bring about a problem in the district. Then uh, and, uh, it was recently that uh, we have some uh, administrative directives which brought about a uh, operation conquest uh, fit with the dispatch made from Accra, especially the IFPU personnel from Accra with a vehicle, a strong vehicle, of course, to come and patrol the borders in the district. Uh, yeah. So uh, their presence alone, in fact, is very uh, good. Then it's also giving uh, building confidence in the people in the community, especially the community along the border uh, post or border area. The local police district commander, Chief Superintendent Stephen Delaporte, is the leader of the team. He said, together with his men, they are ready to counter any terror attacks. Now, when do we just as a team, anti terrorist what team in Bumbu here? They are here corroborating with our security agencies in town and they are working directly to see in the event that they search attack or people trying to enter to be able to what to work search. We are trying to see what we can do to block all this unapproved one. Elias Utango support for Joy News. Moving on, beyond the impact of climate change and trade uncertainties, farms in the United States of America seem to be reeling under the heat of the new immigration policies of the Donald Trump administration. Oh, uh, already, mass deportation of immigrants, mostly from Africa, Latin America, and Asia, seem to have resulted in shortage of labor on farms across states in the U.S., which leaves owners with little option. Prince Apia just returned from Minneapolis, Minnesota, where he engaged some interest groups on the situation, immigration policy, and now brings you this report. Here in Minnesota is this 1,000-acre land where Kaifa Dairy Farms is located, here in the USA. These are the sons of the fifth-generation Kiefer farming family. Kevin Kiefer is one of the children farm we milk 350 cows and farm a thousand acres of land getting labor for their farms have become very difficult kevin pap is president of minnesota farm bureau and the concern we have in agriculture is that our cows and our crops can't wait when our crops are ready to harvest we need that help and farmers need that Sometimes they only need them for two weeks to harvest their crops to help. Sometimes you need it all year to help milk the cows. So we have a very good, experienced, hard-working agriculture labor pool, but some of them are undocumented. The situation spreads across America as immigrants are being deported en masse. The unemployment rate in Minnesota is currently around 3%, which means that areas like Minneapolis, that is a farming community, relies mostly on immigrants to work on some of their farms. But currently, the immigration policy by the Trump administration is pushing most of these immigrants from Africa, 
North America and Asia out of the country, which means their farms are going to be affected. The president has chosen to announce massive deportation raids. The administration has been months. The, the new immigration policy requires undocumented immigrants to leave the country. In the, in the U.S. Jose Delgado is labor expert with Altec. There's a two kinds of visas um, that are now available for people that come and work for agriculture. But those visas are very limited. They, they are only valid for either four, or six, or seven months. So those, those people can apply and they can come here and they can do the, the labor that is required. But for businesses that are not seasonal, uh, dairy, beef, pork, um, poultry, and swine, where you need labor for an entire year, those visas are not applicable they are not viable. So then these businesses, they have to find labor whatever they, 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 they can. Um, so unfortunately, the people that come here to this country and work for these kind of businesses, they don't have access to visas or you know, to have a legal status. Apart from the immigration challenge, the construction industry has become more attractive for the few workers available than agriculture. Uh, on a dairy farm, for example, maybe a worker will make uh, an average of, you know, 10 hours, uh, excuse me, $10 an hour versus construction, those guys, they can make between 20 and 10, 25 dollars uh, per hour. So it's a big difference. And agriculture can't compete with those things. The International Federation of Agricultural Journalists, IFAG, on a boot camp farm tour, understand the labor shortage faces many farmers across the USA. President Owen Roberts believes journalists have some critical roles to play in the situation. But they have a problem of attracting labor here. The media can help provide information, but the media, that's one of the roles I see as the media, is to provide the knowledge that farmers can use to find new ways to do things. Meanwhile, Minnesota Farm Bureau President Kevin Papp says the office is working to change the situation for the better. And we need to fix the system we've got to make sure that if you're here, you've gone through the process, you don't need to be worried about being sent back. Um, so we're going to continue to be at the table and talk about how can we make agriculture labor better, not only for the farmers, but for all the rural communities. Until these immigration challenges are collectively addressed, farmers will continue to grapple with difficulty in getting people to work on their plantations. Prince Apia, reporting. Journalists have been urged to pay attention to sensitive issues in their reportage in order to avoid incitement ahead of next year's elections. The Center for Democratic Development Ghana and the United National Development Program or the United Nations Development Program have begun training journalists on conflict sensitivity reporting and peace building. The focus is on tackling issues that could trigger violence before, during and after the 2020 elections. The initiative is supported by a multi-stakeholder platform for peace and governance. It comprises the National Peace Council, the Office of the Senior Minister, the National Development Planning Commission, among many others. Ohim Interior has more. The multi-stakeholder platform for peace and governance is expected to generate and implement ideas on peace-building initiatives, especially on election violence and political vigilantism. Two sessions of the program have taken place for selected journalists in Accra and Kumasi. Participants learned conflict monitoring and reporting and challenges concepts of conflict as well as peace and legal requirements. Research analyst at CDD Ghana, Mausi Yaudumenu says, stakes are too high for the 2020 presidential and parliamentary elections to be taken for granted. Elections 2020 is approaching and looking at issues uh, fall out from uh, the elections in 2016. There were pockets of violence here and there. Even though, you know, uh, there's not been full-blown violence within our country. 
but we feel that still there's a need for us to uh, look at the issue of uh, peace and then conflict sensitive reporting uh, carefully. And so as the platform, we identified uh, the media as very important stakeholders within uh, uh, the, the news and an information system. And so if we are able to impress on, uh, impress on the journalists and then give them training on how to report uh, sensitively uh, on issues that has to do with conflict, we believe that it will be able to help to tackle uh, some of the issues that will spring up during the electoral cycle, I mean the pre-election cycle, the election cycle, and then the post-election cycle, that have triggers for conflict. So we are not only, we, we want this training uh, to be able to help journalists to be able to think about um, how, to, to think about the sensitivities around conflict. So if it's an issue that they are reporting on, that has to do with um, the ethnic backgrounds of people, that has to do with their culture and then tribal sentiments and then religious sentiments. They need to be able to pick out the issues very carefully and then be able to identify what would not trigger uh, conflict. Ghana Journalist Association is happy about the collaboration for which it pledges commitment to promote peace in Ghana. Kingsley Hope is the Ashanti Regional Chairman. The Ghana Journalists Association is very much ready to partner with the UNDP, CDD, NPC, and other stakeholders in nurturing the Peace and Governance Platform Initiative while working with the various media houses. And that's a wrap for the latest news tidbit we have. We have more news. We'll review the newspapers shortly. Myself and Mama Vyosu Abwaje, but also trekking across the length and breadth of Ghana is Kojo Yangsen, and he's doing that on the Ghana Grand Tour with the British High Commissioner and his riding partner and the rest of the team. You know, they have a big team, emergency services, security, to ensure that uh, they've had um, some good times on the road. They've been around the Jessica, Hohoe stretch, uh, a bit of uh, Hile, Mantenios, and a bit rough. But uh, it's all because they want to raise money for charity. And they're specifically raising this money that you can donate uh, with your Momo uh, on the MTM platform, the Vodafone Cash platform as well, and through the standard, uh, standard charter bank account that we have for the plastic uh, and bench unit of the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Because um, on the Grana Grand Tour, they're making sure that they, they do this for all of us to have a certain sense of responsibility that while we love nature, we also are doing something right. Very special moment, and any moment now, you'll see them coming up the hill. They are pedaling hard, pedaling fast, and it is quite a steep hill that they're climbing. So you can well imagine by the time they get to this point, they will welcome the few minutes break so that we can gear up and continue along our way. And here they are, pulling up at this all-important point where we are just one kilometer away from the halfway mark. Gentlemen, are you ready to make history? Oh, we're halfway there. <laughs> well, so plastic surgery and bench unit. And, you know, that department also could take care of any form of body enhancement. And that would be a legal way for, for you to do it. So if you want to do it, and you know, uh, some men love women with bombs or, or bats, you know, big atom. <laughs> and it's what we're talking on the show this morning. So we're discussing the subject of body enhancement and all that big subject of liposuctions and uh, the cosmetic surgery that comes with it, but who benefits from it as well? And we want to have the best of the professionals. So we're having the head of the department right here in the studio and, and have some great discussions on, the, on it. But also on the street, we're asking ordinary Ghanaians like us what they feel about body enhancement in general. And would they want a partner who has a big butt, you know, and then also what their preference would be. Mm. So please make sure you join us on that. But today is a Friday. And so we also have Dear AM. And Dear AM also brings you all that. But for the body enhancement, this is what you should be expecting. For me, I think it's not a good idea. Because you have to use what God has given to you. Uh -huh. So you were created by God in your own image. And you have to possess what God has given to you, your qualities. You don't have to add anything to it. If God comes right now and he's like, 
and he mentions that he may be a cure and you come, he knows you as a slim person and you come and then you have this big body and he'll be like, how come you are like this? You won't get an explanation and he'll be like, change and become the way you are. At that moment, you won't have a way of going back. So it's really... I don't know whether Kim Kardashian will be happy with some of the views who are expressing this morning, or even Tonto Dike, who has had the latest body enhancement surgery and is, you know, all happy about it on his social media platforms. But also today, because it's a Friday, we bring you the segments, and DIAM is focusing on one of our viewers bringing us his story this morning, and it's from Dixon. And Dixon is giving us this message from Asaman Kesi. If you're Dixon, please, it's not specifically you, because really, we're just using an alliance. So when you bring us the message or you give us, you send us the message through the email, info at majoronline.com, we'll change your name and the location so that no, people don't directly identify. He says, I've been married to my wife for over a year now. My wife is so egoistic and wants everything she says to be respected. She doesn't even accept her mistake. She doesn't listen to anyone, not even her own relatives. I'm a generous person, he says, but she wants me to stop helping people. Dear AM, she wants to control me like a child, and she knocks, complains, and she does things without thinking whether she's right or wrong. If her wish is not fulfilled, she gets angry and refuses to do her normal chores. Chores? And he continues that if I don't apologize, she would not speak to me and won't even respond to anything I say. It also means that even in the bedroom, I'm sure. <laughs> Please help me. And that's Dixon. It's not his real name, though. And Asamanka says where he sent us this message, but not the right place. Because we don't want people to be identified. Your neighbors to be knowing that Charlie. When I had a message, you come out with my door line for and uh, uh, joy for. But please, make sure that you stay with us. So we'll discuss the issue uh, between us. And we'll call in and stream into the studio a relationship expert, a counselor who can give us some great time. And you can also contribute to us through the phone lines. But on social media, we have joined us on TV. Our Twitter handle is the same. And make sure that you bring us more of your messages. Now... Let's do the newspapers. It's now time. <laughs>